Hello, welcome along to the Yoga Place North. My name is Janine Noblet. Today I'm going to show you how to use a chair in your practice to help you deepen the poses or to help you improve in your yoga practice in the poses as well. Please go to your own ability, make sure you're aware of your injuries. If you're new to yoga, I have done some previous videos starting at the foundation poses to help build strength and stamina. And that can be introduced along with a chair if you need to get your poses a little better. For those of you who've got injuries, make sure you work into your ability, okay? So props were introduced to help you hold the poses for longer, to help you improve the poses, and sometimes to help you relax if it's a more restorative uh, way of practicing as well. So I'm going to show you a few little variations to work with in this practice today. The chair to use is a specific chair. It is a yoga chair, so you need something. This is a foldable chair. So you need something with a flat surface. Okay, This is one without a back, as you can see. And I've opted to have one with no bars at the front and there's bars at the back. There are various chairs that you can use, but again, just get something similar to this for your practice um, and make sure it's nice and sturdy. So it's just a little word of warning when using chairs. So the first pose I'm going to look at is how to use a chair to help improve Tadasana. So I'm going to place it sideways on and I'm going to put the back of the chair to me. And for me, this um, chair comes into the tailbone here. So I'm going to stand in Tadasana and spread my feet. I'm going to press the feet down, grip up the legs, and then I'm going to use the back of the chair here to help me roll my arms back, lift up through the chest. Now, as I slide my hands down, I can feel this lift up through the front of the body from the work of the feet. I extend the back of the neck upwards, and I really get a feeling of the whole body participating, and I can feel the chest is opening as I rotate the arms back, really helping me lift and get that lift through the, the thoracic body, the upper back body, from the legs all the way to the top of the head. So that's one way you can use it in Tadasana. Again, you could face it forwards and bring it to the front of the body. So you really feel that you're lifting up the front of the body and roll your shoulders back. Yeah, cause so I can push down on the chair to help get that lift. Okay, so it's a real good way of helping you connect with Tadasana. Now a version I like to do, which is a big challenge on your legs, but also into your ankles as well. So what it does for me though, it's really teaching me how to get my tailbone to move down and in. So I'm going to place my feet with the balls of the feet coming up the chair. So if you've got tight hamstrings, it is going to be a challenge, uh, tight calves, it is going to be a challenge. Now I need to make sure my feet are parallel as I've got my feet in <coughs> on the chair. Now watch for the tailbone, you, you'll want to stick it out. Now the idea is now to lengthen the tailbone down, to lift up in the front of the body, you really will feel the legs working. Try not to lean into it, keeping the weight back in the heels. Okay, so I'm really trying to focus on lengthening, lifting, and then extending upwards. So this is a big challenge for those of you who are a lot more practiced, uh, deeper practice for you, this one for Tadasana. So now it's really making me feel the switch on from my legs. I'm extending up through the body. You can even do Urdhva Hastasana in this position. Extending upwards, really feeling how the legs have to hold you here. And then bringing your arms down and then release. Okay, so moving forward towards like a half dog pose or an Uttanasana pose. So I'm going to use the back of the chair. Now we don't push onto the back of the chair. So this is really good to find out where your balance of your body is as well. So you can place your hands on the back of the chair and you're going to walk your bottom back. You're going to try and get your heels underneath your hips, spread the feet, grip up the legs, and you're going to extend your spine. Now roll these upper arms out still, yeah? And it really helps you get your length in your spine. If you're quite stiff in your shoulders and upper back, you might only get to here. But the idea is the more you work with the legs and the more you extend your tailbone, the more the spine will lengthen, the arms have to hit up, so spread the hands, push the hands into the chair and extend your spine. So this is lovely. If you've got lower back problems, this is really going to give you some nice release in that lower back as well. And 
and then walking forward and bring yourself to come up. So the next one I'm going to do is folding the chair now and I'm going to turn it away from me and I'm going to place the chair in um, at the groin, across the pubic bone, into kind of across the groins here. So if you're taller, the chair will be a little bit more higher. If you're smaller, the chair will be lower. So you just find that point where your pubic bone is. Spread your feet and press down. So we're going to come into Uttanasana coming forward and the chair is going to give you a direction now. So from here... Squeeze your legs, don't lean into the chair. The chair doesn't become your legs, okay? So keep the weight back in your legs as you're learning to fold from your pelvis. And then I'm going to extend forward so I can really work to lift the upper back. So this is great if you've no props um, to put your hands on to use your chair in this way. Lift your chest up, really pull up through your thighs. Now the idea is to keep this length in your spine. So again, I'm not leaning into the chair, the chair's leaning into me. I'm gonna grip up and I'm gonna come down. So I'm lengthening along the chair. So I'm not allowing myself to kind of curl and come in. I'm extending. So I can push into the chair to lengthen the spine. Keep extending, keep extending. And obviously depending on the length of your body, some of you may have your hands on the floor, but I'm really getting the, the direction of my torso. That's the important bit in these poses. So I have to use the legs, I have to grip up. I'm still pressing down into the heels. I can let the head hang, roll the shoulders out. So nice and broad across your neck. Just taking a few breaths here to hold the pose. And again, it's fantastic to learn how to work in your back. You can't overwork when, you, when you're using a chair in this way. Yeah, so it's really giving you the idea of what you should be doing when you're forward bending. And then to come up, we're still working the legs to lift and come up. Oh, it's a lovely one, that one. Okay, so now I'm going to take the chair back out. I'm going to turn it around. And I'm going to give you a couple of options for dog pose. So we're going to place the chair up against a wall. And I'm going to put my hands on the outer edges. So when the hands are on the outer edges, it gives you this action of your arms. So rotating the arms out. I'm going to walk back now. So I'm going to go as far as I can, trying to get my heels down. And again, now I can push back and lift the tailbone up, gripping through the legs. So now it really gives you the idea of how the arms have to work. You can't drop in this pose with your arms. By using the chair, you extend and push back. You're pressing into your heels. Don't worry if your heels are not going down. You can walk a little bit forward to get that feeling if you need to. But if you can keep going backwards and then lift your um, sitting bones up, extend the sides of your body, you get to feel that sense of length in your spine. And your abdomen is nice and free. You can just breathe normally. But your arms, your shoulders, that's where you really start to realise how to work to get yourself back and grip up the legs, really grip the thigh muscles. And then walking forward. Good. So I'm going to show you a different version now. I'm going to turn the chair all the way around to have the base of the chair facing outwards. Placing the hands down on the floor, this time you're going to pop your feet up on the chair. And now push yourself away. You have that feeling of pushing yourself away. This really helps you now get the, the height that's needed in your hips. So I'm really lifting high. I'm spreading the feet and working the feet. I'm gripping up in the legs. Nice deep breaths. And then release. Come forward and be aware of the, the sound that it can make. The other way you can do dog pause is placing your hands forward this way. So now you're going to put your hands on the back of the chair and lift up. Now what this does is really make you work your arms. So those of you who struggle with your arms to get straight in this pose, this is quite a challenge, okay? So just be aware of that. You're spreading your palms, you're rolling your upper arms out, and then you lift up and go back. So it's really making you feel how the arms need to work in this pose extending, lengthening, getting right into your shoulder blades. 
and release. So it makes you lift this underneath part of your arm up when you're using a chair in, in this way, which is what kind of gets lost a lot in the poses without the, the props there. Good, okay. So now I'm gonna use the chair like this for Trikonasana. And I'm gonna place my right foot on into the center. I'm gonna step back. Now I like to work um, with a chair in this pose because it really helps you feel how much weight you should be putting back into this back leg. And it helps you really lift the front of this leg up. Extending the arms and then you can reach over and you can reach for the back of the chair. And again, you're not allowing yourself to sink now because you're reaching for the back of the chair. All your weight's moving into that back leg and you can really get this sensation of the front thigh lifting here now. So we're extending and opening. And then lift and come up. And I always take the back leg to the front leg whilst holding the chair to the back leg. And there's a nice noise when you take your foot off. So. So let's start on the other side. So you can see from the back view. So pressing down into the foot. So feel and see now yourself that the hips are level here and you can lengthen this tailbone. Open up your chest, extend, come over. So again, the chair now I can kind of push down to help me lift my chest and really lengthen this underneath side, drawing up in the thigh. And I've got lots of um, impression into this back leg, into this back foot. And then coming back up. And then once again, just using the chair to help you set in and forget that noise when you take your foot off. All right, so I'm gonna bring the chair back up now and show you a different version where you place the chair behind you. I'm just gonna move these out of my way. So you're going to place the chair behind you this time and slightly over to your right side and step wide. So can you see it's slightly offset to my right side? I'm going to turn my left leg in, my right leg out, and then I'm going to use the chair so it is on my back here so I can feel it. And then I'm going to use the chair to help me keep my chest open. So I'm rotating this back shoulder so I can reach around and hold and rotate the back shoulder, press down in the feet and grip the thighs. Now I can use that chair to give me a guideline of where my chest needs to be. What happens in this pose normally, as we come down, we do this, yeah? We have to learn this rotation of the spine. So as you're coming down, you hold the chair, grip your legs, and you're now using the chair to help you to open the ribs. And you can go down as far as it feels right for you, and you're really using this top rib, this top shoulder to open. It's a lovely feeling. And then pressing for your feet, lift and come up. Turn your feet forward. You can bring your feet together or if you feel quite confident, you just slide your chair across to the other side. So make sure you can hold it with your back arm. That's the important thing. Rotating this left leg out now. So already, you cannot let this side roll. You have to roll back and you're holding the chair. Press your feet, grip your legs and then extend. Slide and use in the chair to guide your chest to open your torso. Looking up at the ceiling if you can. So it's really getting you into this feeling of what should be happening here from the strength of your legs, the base of the pose. Getting you to open the chest. And then press for your feet, lift. Turn your feet forward and join those feet back together. Okay, so warrior poses this is where you get to sit down so you're going to have the seat in this way and you're going to place your foot at the edge so i'm taking my right foot over first we always tend to go to the right first and now i'm going to walk myself back and the idea is i'm trying to line the inner thigh here up with this this front of the chair and that means you've got to do this rotation actions of your hips so if you're stiff in your hips, what will want to happen is your bum will go back and there'll be a big gap here on your chair. So if that's the case, you might need to take your foot a little bit further forward, but then really work to open the thigh here, open the hip. So your thigh, your um, hamstring just sits along the chair. You're not bearing all your weight down. 
okay? So just do your best you can to rotate, trying to line up the front edge of your, your inner thigh to the front edge of the chair, and then walking that foot back without allowing yourself to sit down. Push into this foot and lift your torso. You can take your arms out. So of course, if you're really struggling, you haven't got the strength, sitting down and just practicing getting your, your um, hips open will help you. But the idea really is to push into your heels and use the muscles to help you to lift up. This is just a guideline of how to help you get this angle. And again, from here, you're coming to Parsvokanasana. So again, I'm not sitting, I'm just using the chair as a guide to help me get a better lift opening and feeling of what the legs should do. And then back. Now you can sit down and let go. Okay, so we'll do the other side, both poses. So just moving the chair across. So I take the foot over. So I'm trying to turn this leg out already before I even start to go down. And then I walk this back leg back, okay? So this is if you're, you're well practiced or you're confident enough to do it from this way, I'll show you a different way shortly. Keep rotating this hip out, rotating this out, trying, your aim is to line your inner thigh up to the front edge of your chair here. And keep walking back until you feel your hamstring is touching but you're not sitting. Now I'm rolling and pressing to the outer foot here and that's really lifting the inner thigh to help me. The torso is straight over your hips and arms strong. So you have to build up your strength and stamina. Now extend over and you can come into Pars Bokanasana. So again, I'm not sitting, I'm working the legs, but it's really helping me to open my chest. I get a real good feeling of how to place my body in the pose and then come up and then you can sit so the other thing in this uh, with a chair you might be working with a little bit of an injury or recovering from an injury or just at the moment may not have that ability to actually do all the standing poses but the idea of the standing poses is to build strength and stamina so again you could start sitting if you're really struggling and walk your back foot out and then what you can practice doing is just pressing your feet and lifting. Okay, pressing your feet and lifting. Really trying to build the muscles to hold you. Yeah, so it's really important that we get these muscles to hold you. I have had people contacting me and saying, do you do chair yoga? Um, I, can't, I can't do yoga if the poses are too hard. And I've always invited them into the class and then showed them how we work to build their strength and stamina up. And they've been absolutely amazed because they believed that they have to do chair yoga because they're not strong enough to do yoga. And then when I've taught them through how to go through the foundation poses, um, they've built their strength and stamina to be able to hold it. And then we use the chairs just to refine it even more for them. Um, so playing around with a chair is a really great way to kind of improve your practice. So there's just a couple of things there for you to go at today, just to play around with for now, to improve those foundation poses we've already set. I hope that helps you. Give me some uh, comments below if there's anything you want me to cover more. There's lots more to come yet. And uh, click like and don't forget to subscribe and share it to your friends. Share it to people who you might think of interest if they're struggling with yoga or kind of have said the same that they, they don't feel they've got the strength yet to do that. This will help them get somewhere at least. All right.